When you wish upon a star. You know, the first time Pinocchio actually meets the cricket, he throws a mallet at him and kills him. Better than food, man. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're all doing okay out there. Last week, the end of last week was a little rough. Very sad news, as I'm sure you've all heard by now. Uh, that will be addressed in the near future and a review of Kitchen Confidential is coming. But before we get to that, something a little lighter. Pinocchio by Carlo Collati. I mean, just look at this cover. How could I not pick this up? I picked this up in Austin, Texas at Malvern Books, which is a great little bookstore if you ever find yourself in that city. That's a fantastic city. Austin's a great place. My friend thought the cover was completely demented. And I have to agree. It reminds me of that film by Jan Svankmeyer named Little Otik, which is based off of a, a, a different folkloric tale about a piece of wood that comes to life, or a tree or something like that, but that's a completely strange film. And Jan Svankmeyer is an amazing animator. It's all stop motion animation, how they, uh, how they did that character. And it's, it's just as demented and creepy and uh, darkly humorous as uh, Pinocchio. In fact, Spankmare would have done a terrific adaptation of this of this book. This is one of those books where we all know the basic story, but few of us have ever actually read the original. It contains a great foreword by Umberto Eco, the author of The Name of the Rose at the beginning. It also influenced Italo Calvino, who wrote Invisible Cities, which I have reviewed on this channel. Pinocchio was written by an Italian author named Carlo Collati, who was born in Florence. The book was published in 1883. This was first published in serial form in an Italian children's newspaper, then later compiled into a book. This is from the Encyclopedia of Italian Literary Studies edited by Gaetana Marone. Since it was first written in the early 1880s, Pinocchio has remained one of the most universally recognizable works of Italian literature. All versions of the story, from the well-known Disney cartoon to Roberto Benigni's controversial cinematic version of 2002, emphasize Pinocchio's status as a national icon. We don't need to talk about Roberto Benigni's adaptation. I love Roberto Benigni, but that thing is just... Anyways. Carlo Collati was born Carlo Lorenzini. He was born in Florence. He was an author and a journalist. He wrote about music and politics. He was part of the first war for Italian independence in 1848. At the time, Italy was in the process of becoming unified. Other than that, there's really not a lot on him. He just happened to have written this story that would go on to change the world. In the afterword, Rebecca West writes, he was attracted by order, discipline, and structured educational practices, but he was also fascinated by the occult, mesmerism, and the inherent disorder of things, which shows up everywhere in Pinocchio, which is why it's so great. So after coming to life and terrifying the carpenter who discovers it, a piece of wood, carved into a puppet by the carpenter's friend Geppetto, embarks on a series of fantastical misadventures. We all know, of course, that what Pinocchio really wants is to become a real boy, in every sense of the word. To grow up, but also to become flesh and blood, human. He wants to become human from the inhuman. But first, he must learn how. The hard way. No pun intended. You know, he's made of wood. Piece of trivia, Pinocchio means pine nut. All throughout the book are these strange anthropomorphic animal characters, both good and bad. As to be expected, they teach Pinocchio important moral lessons about being good and working hard. The narrative displays the strange counterintuitive nature of the world and portrays it as this unexpected, often dark and cruel place. Pinocchio is actually almost incinerated, then is hanged by two murderers, battered and nearly fried by an old Greg type sea cave hermit, do you love me? And swallowed by a shark of megalodon proportion. Kaladi originally killed off Pinocchio after he got hanged. Imagine that. Imagine <laughs> reading that to your kid, reading the children's newspaper, or like being six and reading that. And it ends with the puppet getting hanged because he didn't listen. Word. But the editor of the paper wanted him to continue due to its popularity. And thank God he did. The story shows how quickly things can go from bad to worse, but also from terrible to wonderful through acts of kindness, or sometimes the much needed kindness of strangers, and how kindness repays kindness, and we help each other, and we save each other's lives. Pinocchio, like any brat kid, has the compulsion, this insatiable need, to do what he's told not to do over and over and over again. 
He behaves like a real child, rejecting good advice sometimes seemingly for no good reason. So Pinocchio obviously suffers tremendously, but he never gives up. Though the Disney film is dark, this is much darker than the film. For example, like I said, the first time he meets the cricket, he kills him. He lobs a mallet at his head. And I think later he actually meets the ghost of the cricket or something like that. It's, uh, you know, it has this eerie quality to it, this folkloric, eerie, gothic quality. The resurrection and ghosts and fairies and shady, manipulative characters and uh, giant serpents and gi this giant shark. It demonstrates the allure of transgression, as the author of the afterword, Rebecca West, puts it. It's a novel for children, but it's still a novel with adult themes. And it has this excellent dry humor for adults. It's this mixture of both from a time when there was less separation, like the mixture of a novel and a children's book, right? Again, from that afterword. In fact, in Italian culture, a strict division between adult and children's literature was, for centuries, quite an alien idea. Oral folk traditions and a strong classical education were very much a part of shared experience, the latter at least by those upper-class Italians pri privileged enough to have a formal education. And both young and adult Italians shared narratives that drew heavily on these sources. Sometimes it's like an 1800s Italian SpongeBob SquarePants. So this is after Pinocchio gets swallowed by the shark, the giant shark. Not Monster the Whale in the book, it's a shark. Pinocchio at first tried to act brave, but when he confirmed that he was, beyond a shadow of a doubt, trapped in the belly of a sea monster, he began to weep and wail, and through his tears he said, Help! Help! Oh, poor me! Isn't anyone coming to rescue me? Who do you expect to rescue you, wretch? said a cracked old voice in the darkness, sounding like an out-of-tune guitar. Who said that? asked Pinocchio, frozen with fear. I did. I'm a poor tuna, swallowed along with you by the shark. And you? What kind of fish are you? I have nothing to do with fish. I'm a puppet. Well, if you're not a fish, why did you let yourself get swallowed by the monster? I didn't let myself get swallowed. He just came and swallowed me. And now what are we supposed to do here in the dark? Accept our fate and wait for the shark to digest us both. But I don't want to be digested, Hal Pinocchio, starting to cry again. Neither do I, replied the tuna. But I'm rather philosophical, and I take comfort in the thought that when you're born a tuna, it's nobler to die in water than in oil. Nonsense, shouted Pinocchio. That's my opinion, replied the tuna. And all opinions, as the tuna politicians say, deserve to be respected. It's similar in tone to Don Quixote, and it's just as funny. It's amazing that you can laugh out loud from a book that is more than a century old. We need to pay attention to books that make us, that still make us laugh out loud that were written over a hundred years ago. I think in, in a different language uh, than our native one, uh, no less. I think that is very important to pay attention to because there's something timeless, timeless in there. There's something timeless in these books, uh, in Pinocchio, in Don Quixote. And they're still making an impact. It's incredible. Once upon a time, there was a king, my little readers will say at once. No, children, you're wrong. Once upon a time, there was a piece of wood. It wasn't a fancy piece of wood, just a regular woodpile log, the kind you might put in your stove or fireplace to stoke a fire and heat your room. I don't know how it happened, but the fact is that one fine day, this piece of wood turned up in the workshop of an old carpenter, Master Antonio, by name, though everyone called him Master Cherry on account of the tip of his nose, which was always shiny and purple, like a ripe cherry. That's how it starts off. It's hysterical. I mean, and the fact that the humor can just, can just translate from, from, from that long ago, just, it's, and that it can appeal for, to, to kids and adults in, in such a deep, profound, clever way, is, that's, that's magnificent. That's a true accomplishment. It's violent and bizarre, but it always has a moral. Some of them are worth remembering. And it's not always easy to remember all of the really important lessons you learned from when you were young. You know, with the layers of experience that come with being an adult, I mean, an adolescent and then a young adult and then an adult and so on and so forth, you know, it's not always easy to, to uh, retain the purity of some of the most basic things uh, about being a human, you know, it, it can, I wouldn't say that, like, the basic things you learn when you're a kid get corrupted necessarily, but sometimes they do, obviously, you know? I mean, different motivations come into play, different, th you know, we forget, we're hurt, we, things happen, you know, we see, we, the world opens up and all the darkness is revealed, and a lot of times we can forget ourselves in the midst of it. 
So that's one of the beautiful things about Pinocchio is that there are these humorous events, darkly humorous, darkly humorous events that teach this puppet the most basic wisdom that sometimes we as adults forget. And there are lines in there that resonate, again, still have just as much of an impact today for children and adults as they did in Italy over a hundred years ago. I mean, that's astounding. How could he even know? We know barely anything about Kaladi himself, but how could he even know that he was going to write something that is very short, but so profoundly impactful? I'll put it this way. The happy ending feels very deserved. <laughs> this puppet takes more shit than any character I've come across recently. But I think a lot of European folklore is like this. It's much darker, more grim, kind of a reminder of the base realities of existence and the struggles and suffering we all face. And it's, it doesn't really like uh, 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 kid-proof things. It doesn't really make it safe or tame or tone it down. It's like, yeah, this is how it is. It's fucking scary. The world is a scary place and you need to learn how to deal with it. Some differences from the Disney adaptation, which um, it's said is the best, and I mean, for good reason, that film is incredible. It's an amazing, amazing animated film. Uh, but Pinocchio in the story is a bad kid. He's a punk. That's probably the most glaringly obvious difference, other than, you know, I mean, there's no monster of the whale, of course. The, I mean, the film, the whale in the film, you know, and it's all hand animated too, and I haven't seen that film all the way through since I must have been uh, uh, very, very, very young. But I remember it's dark and often disturbing. But I just watched some clips on YouTube, and you just watch that animation. I mean, that it's so incredible. But anyways, there's no monster of the whale. Uh, it, instead, it's a shark. It's a giant shark, which, of course, is much more frightening. The book also contains this awkward, cringy humiliation of Pinocchio. You can just see it coming, of course, the, the entire time. You know, he's learning and he's failing and he's never giving up. But there are just moments when you know, of course, he, yeah, he's making the, the worst decision imaginable. And you're just like, oh, man, you know, which is the, the, the effective device of the book, of the, of the storytelling. But yeah, no matter how bad it gets, he never gives up. He never gives up. Yes, there is the infamous nose lengthening from lying, but as the afterword reminds us, that's only one of the bad things that Pinocchio does in the book. There's a whole other list. So if you like European folklore, I definitely recommend you pick this up. Uh, the Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter, The Brothers Grimm, but also if you're a fan of Dante, Homer, The Odyssey, Umberto Eco, Italo Calvino, and of course Cervantes and Don Quixote. If you like that style, the straightforward narrative that is actually deceptively simple, but truly complex, and reveals a lot about human nature, look no further. Better than food. Perfect to enjoy with a cup of coffee. Now who's gonna get it for the coffee lottery? For those of you who are new, the coffee lottery is where I take the names of all the patrons who have donated $5 or more per video on Patreon, and I place their names in here. Whoever's name I draw for each review that I do, uh, I send them the book I'm reviewing, a hard copy of the book, and a bag of coffee that I've roasted myself. If you would like to donate to the show and get entered into the lottery, you can head to the description box below and click on the link. Thanks so much. I sincerely appreciate it. Helps keep this whole project going. Let's see who's gonna get it. All right, here we go. Riley. Cool. Thanks a bunch, Riley. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you have not already. I'd really appreciate it. Also, a like on Facebook would be terrific. Instagram, Twitter, any of that, I'm on all of that. Um, always remember, die reading. Die reading of natural causes after living a life full of books, please. Not by your own hand. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you're well. Great to see you as usual. Have a good night. Talk to you soon. Ciao.